for taking a few minutes to talk to us today. Uh, we just out of our seminar about uh, the role of data in the digital revolution and how marketers can kind of harness that power. Could you tell us a little bit about your experience and kind of the key points that you took from that session? Sure, yeah, yeah. Thanks, uh, Katrin. It was a it was a pretty good seminar, I think, here on, on the Mexico first day, first session that's coming up, or that has come up. And um, so quickly about myself, uh, I'm uh, Hagen Wenzig, I'm advisor um, for, for Datorama. Ever since they uh, started out with a little booth down at the startup hall uh, here of, of the Mexico. And, um, and so now seeing um, first this brilliant um, booth here and, and having attended the seminar, it, um, it shows the progress not of the company only, but also of the importance of how data is now becoming the core of a marketeer's decision how to make their whole world, their company more effective, especially. So we heard a lot in the seminar about effectiveness, um, how to learn about your, your customer or your consumer. You might know your customer for the uh, colleague from Pernod, uh, who knows the bar and who knows the restaurant, but who doesn't know the consumer. Uh, yes, and one of the really interesting themes that we had there was how across industries and how across different marketing department structures, marketers are finding ways to harness the power of their data, understand their end customer better, understand their marketing performance and optimize at the same time their marketing and the impact of their marketing on their business, right? And I think this is something that is very close to your experience, uh, you know, as a former CIO and, and, you know, all of your experience around working agency side, working in marketing, but also working in data. This is something that you really understand very well. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it resonates even um, looking back at the beginning of my career, I did a lot of work around e-procurement. Um, and that's so the other end. And at that time, you needed to ask your um, supplier very often about the data that you didn't have. <laughs> Uh, and ask them how yes. how, uh, how did how did we spend uh, your money uh, basically and um, now somebody often needs to go out and ask their customers about the data um, to be able to cross the bridges across different domains and different different countries different markets that you're covering and um, and at IPG um, so my my last corporate role that I had. Uh, that's what we had to do there as well, go out in the markets and then ask individuals and then try to weigh, try to find a way to harmonize everything. And I guess that harmonization piece is really where, you know, where it's at. Specifically given um, the amount of data that uh, marketers have at hand today within consumer insights but also within their own marketing performance data including customer-specific data uh, for some of them, depending on the industry, of course. And that harmonization piece is something that we talked a lot about in the, in the, in the seminar because the complexities around understanding whether blue is blue in data set one, two, or three cross the data that you, uh, you know, that you own as a marketer, it's also present in the data from the industry. Yeah, what I found crazy was Brian's uh uh, anecdote um, that he just he just became a customer to Nielsen so we're talking about a brand new relationship getting brand new data and he wanted to just look of a couple of years of TV data and uh, who watched how many TV shows in the US and he had to manually manually retag 40,000 individual entries of the data set that just came from Nielsen it wasn't sent over in fax machines 30 years ago, no, no, he just received it. So the struggle um, that everybody has. Hearing about the experience of um, Alexis from at ABN AMRO, you know, harmonizing the data across several agencies, Guibert from Pernod Ricard, who has 85 markets across a number of brands and has to harmonize and kind of align everybody around that. And then Glenn for, from Electronic Arts, who has all of this access to uh, uh, to vast amounts of data sets and has built this amazing strategy to have customer customer So one essence data. we come out of we came out of uh, with the seminar was that um, there are typically two different approaches and then probably a little gray zone in the middle that you either first define your KPIs 
and then you figure out how can you match your data to your KPIs and collect all the right data so that the KPIs can be measured or you trust your data already because it might be nice and clean um, and you dig into it and you do some machine learning or some other algorithms that help you uh, disaggregate and figure out what are the KPIs that really drive the company's performance. When you look at your whole customer base, which is fantastically growing every day, um, what would you say is, are we seeing a shift that people can trust their data more? Or are we still at a stage where mostly it starts out with, here are the KPIs, the CFO has already seen them and approved them, and now let's, match, let's make sure that the data can actually um, I would say the it. generic scenario that we see is organizations that have a level of general understanding of what type of areas they want to measure. Mm -hmm. Very, I, I would say relatively rarely do we see it go down to specific KPIs before the first contact with the data is made, I okay. would say. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because obviously the data being what it is, it's generally necessary to uh, understand the data first, so integrate it and, and, and look at what the data is in all actuality before the measurement framework can be, uh, can be built to a realistic degree. Mm -hmm. And then comes the buy-in and the kind of alignment internally around those KPIs. And obviously those KPIs are living, breathing kind of uh, uh, measurements. So it's important for them to be able to change depending on the constant shifting in the marketing strategy and execution. One question, and, um, and then we'll probably wrap it up, uh, was uh, that I didn't get to ask. I asked one that was good enough. Uh, and that is, um, do you see an expectation from customers that for every marketing technology dollar they spend, they should be able to reduce other marketing spend? Or is there no relationship yet established between those two? We don't necessarily see uh, an, an as linear expectation around marketing performance, specifically also because um, some of the decisions that our customers are making are really around marketing performance, but others are really about marketing versus the business. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily uh, an expectation about reducing spend in a channel versus another, it's around adjusting and understanding how channels work together, which is why we have all the emphasis around customer journey and understand how the synergies work between the channels so that you can kind of, you know, talk to your customers at every stage of the funnel. Right, right, right. Excellent. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much and enjoy the rest of New Mexico. Thank you. <laughs>